This issue's pill review is devoted to a chemical called dextromethorpham hydrobromide. It's the DM in cough syrup and one of the most mystifying of the drugs in the pharmacopoeia. Even though it is the king of over-the-counter cough medicines, it is barely mentioned in common reference works. That's odd since DMHBR is related to some powerful anesthetics like PCP. Sold all over the place to keep us away from codeine, it is strong enough to produce a strange high as well as convulsions, nausea, loss of consciousness, hypertension, and possible brain damage. I drank about 8 ounces of DM cough syrup, straight, no chaser. I was feeling kind of achy and wanted to see if it would kill pain. Earlier smaller doses had shown me that the stuff could cause confusion and restlessness, but I couldn't remember exactly how much I'd taken. Soon, any pain I had dissipated. After a few hours, I went to bed. It was midnight, but I felt neither awake nor asleep, sort of like a typical narcotic high, but had no great shakes. Soon, any pain I had dissipated. After a few hours, I went to bed. It was midnight, but I felt neither awake nor asleep, sort of like a typical narcotic high, but no great shakes. Mildly content, not kind of nodding, just not as pleasant. At four o'clock in the morning, I awoke suddenly and remembered I had to go to Kinko's and also to shave off about a week's worth of stubble from my face. These ideas seemed very clear to me. That seems normal enough, except that I had a reptilian brain. My whole way of thinking and perceiving had changed. It was like I was operating with a medulla only or something. I was able to do any mechanical thing just fine. I had full control over my motor functions, but I still had the impression that I was ungainly. That's because I felt detached from my body, like being on laughing gas. So I got in the shower and shaved. While I was shaving, I thought that for all I knew I was hacking my face to pieces. Since I didn't see any blood or feel any pain, I didn't worry about it. In fact, my feelings were so shallow or non-existent that I couldn't have felt anything like anxiety. Looking back, I see now that I had lost any sense of time. I knew I was capable of performing various actions, but I could not conceive of any consequences to those actions. Had I looked down and seen another limb, I wouldn't have been surprised at all. I would have just used it. It was very much like writing inside my own body. I gained a kind of insight that I've only previously associated with acid or maybe dreams. In a dream, you aren't surprised by the absurd, like an extra limb, or like on acid, you realize the absurdity of it all. But there were no hallucinations. The world became a binary place of dark light, on, off, safety, danger. When I felt a need, I determined it was hunger and ate almonds until I didn't feel the need anymore. Same thing with water. It was like playing a game, staying alive but with no fear at all. I sat down and tried to write down how this felt so I could look at it later. I was very aware that I was stupid. I wrote down the word Cro-Magnon. I probably seemed like Benny on L.A. Law. I thought I would have trouble driving, but I had none. I only felt unsafe when in the dark street until I got into the safe car. Then I drove to Kinko's, where I parked in the deserted street, felt quite content to wait for the crossing lights, etc. I knew that it was important to avoid cops, not to provoke them. Luckily, there were only a couple of people in the store, and one of them was a friend. She confirmed what I had seen in the mirror, that my pupils were of different sizes, one wasn't quite round. I was fucked up. I knew there was no way I could make any subjective decisions or know if I was correctly adhering to social customs. I didn't even know how to modulate my voice. Was this loud? Do I look like a regular person? Outside, my friend shivered, so I asked her if it was cold because temperature-wise for me, there was only tolerable, intolerable. I found that out in the shower. I guess I wasn't cold since I had no urge to change locations. In no way was this like being drunk, even though I kept thinking I probably looked drunk. 
Although I still had control over my motor skills, I was very aware of my arms and legs. They seemed longer. Although walking was no problem, I felt more like I was loping. Objective observation of people under the influence of DM shows their gestures to be expansive and their strides to be longer than normal, so it wouldn't be fair to say that DM has no effect on motor skills. You can easily walk, but I doubt you could do ballet. I understood that I was involved in a big contraption called civilization, and that certain things were expected of me, but I could not comprehend what the hell they might be. All the words that came out of my mouth seemed equal. Instead of saying, reduce it about 90%, I could have said, two eggs and some toast. And these two phrases would have been the same. The whole world was broken down into elemental parts, each being of equal value to the whole, which is to say, of no value at all. I sat at a table and read a newspaper. It was the most absurd thing I had ever seen. Each story purported to be a description of a thing or event, or was supposed to convey news of reality in another place besides here. This seemed stupid. An article on the war that's going on in Burma was described as the war the West forgot. It had an at-a-glance chart that said Burma had so many acres and was approximately three times the size of the state of Washington. This was meaningless, and I knew it. The story did not even begin to describe the tiniest fragment of the reality of what was happening in that place. Since I hadn't always been a reptile, I knew things were what they call complicated, and that the paper's pitiful attempt to categorize individuals as rebels or insurgents, or to describe the reasons for the agony was ridiculous. I laughed out loud. But back to being a reptile, I found it kind of pleasant. I was content to sit there and monitor my surroundings. I was alert, but not anxious. If someone had come to me with an axe, I would have acted appropriately. Fight or flight. Every now and then I would do a true reality check to make sure I wasn't masturbating or strangling someone. Because of my vague awareness that more was expected of me than just being a reptile. At one point I ventured across the street to a takeout place to get something to eat. It was closed and yet there were workers inside. This truly confused me and I considered a way to simply go in, grab the food, and make off with some. Luckily the takeout opened, it was now 6am, and I entered the front door like a normal customer. It was mentally difficult to remember how to do a money for merchandise transaction and even more difficult to put it into words, but I was successful. I ate bite by bite until I was full. If I had become full before finishing the hamburger, I think I would have simply let it fall from my hand. The life of a reptile is boring to us, but I was never bored when I was a reptile. If something started to hurt me, I took steps to get away from it. If it felt better over here, that's where I went. Now, 24 hours later, I'm beginning to get my neocortex back. Soon, I hope to be human again. <laughs>